Hello everyone, in this video we will have uh, some practice with predicate logic. So uh, we will have two exercises to go through. First exercise will be um, on translating from predicate logic into English, into natural language. And the second exercise will be translating from natural language into predicate logic. Uh, and the idea here is that uh, by looking at these examples, you will be able to understand how, how predicate logic works. So first of all, when we're dealing with predicate logic, we have two main things. We have sets of elements, such that, for example, S is a set of students, T is a set of teams, and Pirate is a member of it, is an element in that set, and P is a set of projects. Uh, and set, basically, it's a collection of elements. Each element is unique. We don't care about the order of elements. It's like a bag of things. Uh, we also have predicates. Uh, predicates which are like, if you're a programmer, it's like a function that takes some parameter and um, returns a Boolean value, either true or false. And uh, since we're dealing with logic, uh, everything has to uh, resolve either to true or false. For example, the predicate MSE will return true if the past parameter S, which has to belong to the set of students, is an MSE student, a Masters of Software Engineering student. Um, the other predicate we have is in team TS, so it takes two parameters, T from the set of teams, S from the set of students, and it, re it returns true if student S belongs to the, to the team T. And uh, similarly, team project uh, takes two parameters. It takes some parameter T belonging to the set of teams. It takes uh, P belonging to the set of set of projects, projects and uh, will return true if project P is assigned to the team T. Okay, uh, so let's start. Uh, here, we, we let's look at our first proposition. Uh, so um, in predicate logic, we have quantifiers. This one is called universal quantifier, and if you look at it, uh, it's an A upside down, and uh, A stands for all. So uh, we read it as for all S belonging to the set of students. And the other one is uh, existential quantifier, and uh, if you can see, it's a um, uh, flipped E, and E stands for exists. So we are saying that this we read as there exists T belonging to the uh, set of teams. So for all students, there exists a team such that if student is an MSc student, if this is true, this has to be true as well. So in other words, all MSE students, all students which meet this condition are in some team there exists at least one team that they are in. So this is existential. Exist means at least one. Okay, so uh, uh, that's how we, exactly how we read it. For all MSC, or we can actually say all MSC students, students are, uh, have a team. Okay, all students, MSC students have a team. Okay. Um, the next one, we're saying that for all T belonging to the set of teams, there exists S belonging to the set of students such that in team TS. So here we're saying like uh, that all teams, there at least one, for all teams, there is at least one student such that uh, that student belongs to the team. So student S is a member of that team. So all teams have at least one member. That's it. You are welcome to pause the video and maybe try to uh, answer the, uh, translate the propositions before I do that. Um, okay, so for all teams belonging to T, there exists project P belonging to the set of projects such that team project TP. So here we are saying, okay, team project, it means that project P is assigned to team T. To team, to team T. Okay, so all teams, there is at least one project that is assigned to them. So all teams have at least one project.
project assigned assigned to them. That's it. Um, that's it. Okay. So here a similar proposition. So for all projects, there is this team such that team project TP. It's very similar, but here we're saying with here we were saying that for all teams there is a project, and here we're saying that for all projects there is a team. So all projects have at least one team assigned to them. Or we could also say each project has at least one team assigned to it. Okay, that's alternative. So like there are many ways to say it in English. Um, now uh, we look into a bit more complex one. Uh, so here we are saying that for all students and for all teams T1 and T2, so uh, these are variables, right? So for all students and for any two teams, and here if you can see all of this is part of the conditional. This is a condition and this what that which has to follow. That this implies the right side, right? So let's see at this condition. Let's look at this condition. If student is an MSc student, okay, and student is in team one, and the student is in team two, then it means that the team one and team two are actually one and the same team. So this one we are like we are trying to establish uniqueness that all students. If it is an MSE student and he is in team one and team two, it means that team one and team two are actually the same team. So it's this variable actually represents the same team. So uh, each student is at most in one team. Okay, each student is at most at one in in one team. Um, so that's that's what what we have established. Interestingly, that. Um, here we are not saying that he has to be in one team. We are saying that if he is in a team, then no more than one. And here we establish that all MSc students have a team, so they kind of um, uh, complement each other, right? Okay. Um, then the next one. Uh, so here we are saying that there exists student one and student two, uh, such that they are not the same students. So there are at least two students who exist and in team pirates s1 and in team pirates s2 so in other words we are saying that okay team pirates has at least two people and for all s3 belonging to s such that in team pirates pirates s3 it means that uh, so if there is a third student who is in Team Pirates, it means that actually it's not the third student, but what? It means that it's either the first student, that S3 either represents the same, same student as S1, or it represents the same student as S2. So what we're saying is that first part, so we have two parts here, right? This part is saying, okay, uh, there, are, there are two people in Team Pirates. There are two students, there exist two students and it's not the same student uh, and they they are in the team pirates and um, the second part so here we are declaring a new a new uh, quantifiers and said and for any other student who is in team pirate it's actually not a new student it's either s1 or s2 that's it uh, so but it's interesting that here we have like we are introducing the notion of scope before we had all the uh, quantifiers and variables declared declared on the right on the left side, and once we once we put this dot, which means such that everything all uh, all occurrences of uh, these variables are in scope of these quantifiers. So here we are um, uh, like our scope for S one S two is uh, everything, but for S three here we cannot use it because we haven't declared it yet. So we can only reuse it after after we have declared. So here we're declaring, and for any other student S3, it has to be either, if he is in the team pirates, it has to be either student one or student two. Uh, so this is the notion of scope. Also the convention is to not uh, put the existential quantifier 
in the conditional, in the left part of the of a conditional statement. Why? Because there exists is already factual. We are claiming that it exists. What, whereas in conditional, we are saying if this is the truth. So it's kind of a uh, like contradiction, right? So if we if we are using existential quantifier, we are saying that this thing exists for sure. And in a conditional statement, the left part is conditional. So we're saying if it is the case. So normally with conditionals, we use um, existential quantifier because existen or universal quantifier because we're saying for all S such that which meets this condition. And there might be no S that meets this condition, then uh, uh, like it's also fine, right? Uh, so yeah, so let's, let's write down the English version of it. Uh, what we will say is... Um, Team Pirates has two members exactly. So as you can see, the natural language definition uh, is um, a bit more concise. But that's exactly what we're saying. Two members, not more, not less. Uh, so that's what you can say. Okay, and let's look at the last one, the most complex one. So here we're saying that, okay, for all Team 1 and Team 2 belonging to the set T, there exists project P1 belonging, yeah, P1, there exists P1 belonging to the set of projects such that team project T1, P1, and uh, yeah, okay. So here we're saying, okay, for, for, all, uh, for all T1, there exists project P1. So all teams have a project. Okay, we have established that. And for all projects P2, for any other project P2, such that T1 has this project. It's actually the same project, right? So we are saying that, okay, for any other project belonging, belonging to the set of projects, if, team, if this Team1 has it, then it means it's the same, the same project. And saying that T2, so now we, we, we are using this one, right? And saying that this Team2 is not the same as T1, is the same as saying that team two does not have this project p1 so we let's let's try to take it bit by bit first of all we establish that for all teams there is one project each team has a project okay fair enough and then we're saying for any other project p2 if team if this team has it it means that it is the same project so we are saying that okay it exists and it's only one project. There is no more than one project for a team. That's what we have established by this point, right? And then we are saying that, okay, and if there is another team, which is not this team one, any other team, it, it means it's the equivalent of saying that, okay, this other team does not have the project P1. So. Uh, we establish three things. Each team has a project. This project is it. Each team has no more than one project, and each team has a unique project. So, in other words, no other team has the same project as them. So, each team has one unique project assigned assigned to them. And no other team, we like that. Uh, the fact that no other team has uh, the same project, we're saying unique. But you can make it more explicit uh, uh, using your uh, using natural language. Uh, that's it. Thank you. And uh, the second exercise we will look in the second.